Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is David Fogel. I'm from company Containero from Czech Republic. And I'm here to present you our way to the visual robot framework coding. And what does it mean to us? But before we actually get into the visual coding, let's try to think back a little how it was for us to be a robot framework newbie. Let's imagine uh, you are a manual tester and you want to get into the world of automation and you started robot framework. How it will feel like? So really imagine this is the first time this uh, manual tester is experiencing robot framework. He needs to understand many concepts and if he didn't do any programming languages before, it will be really complex for him. So he needs to understand methods, he needs to understand arguments, he needs to understand variables, structures, cycles, exception libraries, how to return values and store them in variables. That's not easy task for a new guy. He also needs to install Python in his system. He needs to use command line. Maybe he did not, didn't do that before at all. He also needs to install IDE. And so he has some grid selection of visual studio code or PyCharm or any other. But as he will probably be missing a lot of extensions, uh, the experience won't be really great. So he managed all of that somehow, created a new project, new file structure. He creates a new robot file and copies some example from the documentation and he wants to run it. Well, it fails for the first time because maybe he did not install a robot framework yet and he needs to figure out how to install a robot framework via pip or any other issue that uh, Python is not set in environment variables. That happens to every one of us. But wait, I was expecting that the robot framework was supposed to be easy and uh, it should be an easy way to start automating. So why is it this complex? It's much easier than using OP languages like C-sharp, like Java, right? Um, similar like in these languages, we have some tests. We have them in test suites though. Uh, we have keywords instead of methods. They are in resources. Well, sometimes in they are in test suites too, like uh, private keywords. Keywords can have arguments. Okay, we can, we can use that. We have variables everywhere. Luckily, there are only three types. So that's good. We have structures, we have if else, we have try except, so some common ground there. We have cycles, for cycles, while, and many other not so nice things. Well, or for some, they're really nice. Like for example, this variable inside, variable inside, variable. That makes it really good when you are testing multiple environments and want to use something like that in a generic way. But this is still a lot of coding. So how does this fit with the overall visual programming and coding that we promised to you? Right, so here is the idea. I'm a manual tester and I want to create and run a test, an automation test. So I would probably like to have a place where I can just log in. I don't need to set up anything. I just can just log in. So probably web application. I can create a testing project or open already created project. I can start building my test. So even though I don't know how to code, I want to build a test. I have a scenario and I want to automate it. I also want to run it, right? I want to see the results and I want to see the results in pretty simple way. I want to see green when, when it passes and I want to see red when it fails. I'm a simple user. I want to have a simple things and this is what I understand. And I want to do all of this without any installations or using the console. I want to have some pure visual experience like uh, using a Twitter and writing a tweet or buying groceries online. And those are simple applications. I can use them. Why the automation testing can, can't be like that? It's more complex than that, but this is the general idea. So how it can be applied?
Maybe now's a good time to explain the visual coding, what it is actually. You can see a great example on the screen. This is taken from a Unity editor. Uh, this is used for game design. You can see the uh, little boxes there, which can be translated like a robot framework keywords. These boxes have some attributes inside. These are robot framework arguments. And they have those lines coming out of them, which is a keyword return. And it's being accepted by a different box, a keyword, into their argument. And if a user wants to change the process, he just takes the little box and places it somewhere else and connects it to different key, uh, to different keyword, to different box. Or if he wants to add another one, he can just do that from a set of prepared uh, boxes. So this, this seems pretty simple. And this is used actually across different applications for business process modeling and etc. So how can we use this to actually automate in robot framework? And can we use this in a way? Let's see. So we have the basic idea. Uh, we want to make testing and automation simple for everyday user, whether it is manual tester or a BA. We also know that this idea actually works because there are uh, similar visual uh, coding studios already out there. Uh, we know Robot Framework, we love it, we love to work with that, and we know a little bit of Python development. So that should be simple, right? And uh, the good thing is we also have some budget available that we can spend on this proof of concept. So we sat down and started to think about the, the actual architecture of the application. So we knew we want to create a web application. Because right now, if you are coding, if you are writing autom automation tests, you need to use IDEs. And uh, these IDEs are for single user. It's not like uh, when you are using Google Docs, where you see what everyone, is, uh, what everyone else is typing, or Figma. Right? We want to have the same experience for automation testing and development. We want to create tests and keywords, so we want to cover everything that the robot framework has to offer in this visual way and we want to run the tests and collect the reports as easily as possible so it's accessible for user but we have one big requirement and that is that we want to work with robot framework code we don't want to have some internal code or something like that we want to have robot framework and we want to import any existing project into our application and we also want to allow users to export it. So you can use application on project you created, whether it has five tests, 500 tests. And then if you are, uh, if you are happy with that and you just want to execute the test somewhere else, because that's an option, you can export the code. So this was the, the main idea and we started to execute on that. And so here we are, two years later, after many, many hours spent on the implementation, on re-implementations, uh, re-implementations of re-implementations, as the usual de development goes with the proof of concepts. And we actually created something, and we created something really useful. So let's look at that. What do you see on the screen is our project view of the application. So you can see the basic dashboard for, for tags. You can see the numbers, like number of tests, number of custom keywords, if there are any warnings or errors in the code. And you can also see a simple view of latest test runs that we executed. And now let's have a, have a look on the editor itself. It definitely doesn't look like that Unity experience we showed earlier, but this is uh, what we came up with for uh, developing tests. So what you have on the left side is the regular IDE uh, file structure. So it uses the same structure like you are used to. On uh, the middle of the screen, 
you can see a Selenium library that is used uh, in this project. And you can see the individual keywords, some wait until elements are there. And on the right side, you can actually see the live editor or the test steps itself. We can see that there are some issues. There are some three, um, three steps that are probably missing some arguments. So we could, we should probably fix that. And if we go and click on the run test, get to this screen and uh, you can see that this is actually executed test inside of our application and you can see the logs that are you that you are used to do used to see so pretty cool right i can in a cloud in a web application i can design a test case and run it to get the results there are also many other features that uh, I didn't show in this short presentation, like user profiles. You would expect that from web application, private projects, and also the option to share projects and create teams with other users. If you want to work on uh, one project together, you can run the test against uh, our cloud execution that is running in Docker's. You can also install or not install, but download an agent for an execution in your secure networks. So in case uh, your systems run behind VPN, like most of the projects do, you can use the agents to execute the tests directly from our, our, our own application in your own environment. We have also statistics, so you can see keyword usage, you can see how many tests and how many each of the tests uh, how many steps do they have? You can see the full test run hit reports. So for any test run that is executed in our system, you will actually see the reports and you can download them. And also you can see history of the project changes. So in case you are searching for uh, who changed their test, you can find it pretty easily. So with all those features, we came this year to Robocon 23, to Helsinki in Finland, and we were looking for the feedback. We wanted to see and hear uh, if this idea of ours can be used within the robot framework environment, if actually people like it and they would like to use it. And we had great talks with many of you guys. Uh, and you came up with so many different options how to use Robot Framework. And actually many great features of, uh, came from that. For example, statistics for variables. We are having statistics for keywords, but we, don't have any, we didn't have anything for variables. And that was a great idea. So we already implemented that. And you can find it in, the, in our beta. We also... Uh, we're speaking a lot about keyword duplicities. Uh, so whenever you have some keywords and you just copy paste the keyword and change one line, this creates duplicity. And so we are thinking about how to track that, how to show it that a keyword is like 90% the same like other keyword. Maybe it's something to look into that for the automation developer. So we would definitely want to create a view just to track this duplicities and how to, how to actually get rid of those. Uh, we are also talking about storing test artifacts. Like at the moment, we are storing the results. So the reports, uh, the logs, the screenshots are not saved. So that's why we want to also include all those options to do test artifacts. Uh, we had a great questions about integrations. So uh, we are thinking now about integrating with Jira uh, as soon as possible maybe also x-ray and definitely we want to open uh, to create uh, like a third party api so uh, if you if you have jenkins if you have team city and you want to execute tests within our system through these systems like for the cic lifecycle we definitely want to create that and we are also speaking or we're speaking about test debuggers so how to actually execute the test and set the test uh, or specific step 
as a debugging step. So the execution stops at the time and allows the user to work with the application that he's testing or try different keywords. There are some great options already uh, in the robot framework ecosystem. So we definitely want to explore that. And if there are some options, how to integrate together. And what we have already in works is test execution planner. So currently you can execute the tests only via uh, manual execution. So you need to go into the application and hit the run button for the test suite or for tags that you want to run. You want to create a planner like in Jenkins or TeamCity that you can say, okay, run this set of tests every day at 9 a.m. And for all our robot framework developers out there or automation developers that want to code, I understand you. I know that sometimes I just want to get my hands dirty and write all the robot framework code myself. So we are implementing something for you as well. Right now, you can see the option to actually see any test or any keyword as the code, as you can see on the screen. But we have something much more in store. We want to have a fully pledged IDE within the web. So imagine the situation where uh, some of your automation testers, they can be manual testers, right? Because uh, automating in this application uh, might be pretty simple, need some help. They need you to go and change some keyword and they don't really understand how it works because it's too complex for them. So you can just go in into the system, switch uh, the editor into your preferred mode. So it can be visual or it can be a pure code. You can go in, you can change the code, you can either fix it or explain it to those users or provide more logging, for example, in a simple way, in a code way, like you are used to. Pretty cool. So this is Tomtit, our visual robot framework application. Uh, it's currently in open beta, so feel free to try that, use that uh, any way you like. If you find issues, please report that them to us and we will try to fix them in no time and we are looking for your feedback.